Hello, Aldersgate Online. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for joining us live at a new time, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. I know that we're doing something a little different, shifting the time, uh, taking the message that is uh, preached uh, at live at our 930 service at Aldersgate Church. Uh, this morning's a little bit different. Uh, this is pre-recorded. I'm back in the studio uh, for this Sunday. Uh, it's Labor Day Sunday, and so we're going to do something a little bit differently today. Uh, we're going to talk about prayer on Labor Day. And as we talk about that on Labor Day Sunday, it's appropriate because prayer is our greatest labor as Christians. Let me say that again. Prayer is really our greatest labor as Christ followers, as Christ believers. Jesus said this in John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. He said, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whoever ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, when we usually look at these a couple of verses from Jesus, we focus in on two things. Number one, we're going to do greater things than Jesus even did. And two, whatever we ask in His name, He will grant. Now, there's a lot of preaching and teaching to be done there, but here's what I want to focus in on this morning. We tend to think that prayer is the exercise or the spiritual discipline that prepares us for God's work. Like we pray and that prayer leads into God's work. But think about it this way. Prayer does not equip us for God's work. Prayer is the greater work. Now, I hope you like that because Oswald Chambers actually said that. Prayer does not equip us for God's work. It is the greater work. And so we're going to talk a little bit about today. Not only are we going to talk about pray, praying, we're going, to, we're going to practice praying. Prayer is more practice than theory. So I don't want to just give theory. I don't want to just give theology today. I want to give practice. Richard Foster said, by praying, we learn to pray. Philip Yancey said, we learn to pray by praying. Mother Teresa was once asked, how do we learn to pray? Her response, by praying. Jesus said the same thing. One time the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gave the disciples a prayer. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. We call it the Lord's Prayer. But really, it's not the Lord's Prayer. It's the disciples' prayer. I mean, Jesus wouldn't be praying something like, Lord, forgive us of our sins, because Jesus didn't need to pray that prayer. So in response to the disciples asking, teach us to pray, he gave them a practical prayer. And so what I want us to do today is I just want us to look at the Lord's Prayer. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not. Either way, it's okay. Sometimes when we're familiar with things, it actually keeps us from practicing them, if you know what I mean. So we're going to take the Lord's Prayer today, and we're just going to practice. Lord, teach us to pray. So here's what I would encourage you to do. Get to a place, uh, hopefully if you're watching us live, if you're in your living room or something like that, get to a place that's comfortable uh, where you can just spend some time here over the next few minutes. Uh, if you're driving, please do this with your eyes open. If you're in the gym, uh, maybe get to a, to a corner or, or get to a place on a piece of equipment that you can do this. But let's just work through the Lord's Prayer. When the disciples said, Jesus, teach us to pray, here's what he said. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's think about that. Our Father. We talked just a couple of weeks ago about how we are children of God. God gives us that name. And now he gives us the ability to address him as Father. Who art in heaven, yes, that's our home. But it tells us that he's so much greater than we are, so far above who we are. And we recognize that hallowed just means hallelujah, praise his name. Scripture tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. So let's just take some time to do just that. So wherever you're at, if you're in a living area, just get to a place where you can get comfortable. If you're in a gym, maybe on a piece of equipment or whatever, if you're driving, please keep your eyes open. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to just take some time 
to give Him praise. It doesn't matter where you're at in life, there's always something to be grateful for, always something to give God thanks for. So whether it's something that you journal out during this time, if you say it out loud, if you sing it out loud, let's just take some time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The next thing Jesus taught us to pray was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a reminder from God that prayer is to align our will with God's will. And, and, and you know, we're, we're very familiar with the next part of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, but only can we ask that only after we put into proper perspective God's will versus our will. And really just allowing God to show us, give us self-awareness, the Holy Spirit to speak into us about places where our kingdom has taken greater priority than His kingdom. And where our kingdom is the agenda and not His kingdom. So let's just spend some time praying that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, show us where our kingdom has taken greater priority than your kingdom. And now, give us this day our daily bread. Ah, this is the part of the Lord's Prayer, the disciples' prayer, our prayer that we really like, right? God, give us what we need. And isn't that the key? That He give us what we need, what we have need of, not what we have greed of. But even the places we have greed of, it's okay to ask Him for those things. So, just take some time. Just for you first, personally, for me personally, to just ask God to give me what I need. And then once we've done that, let's take some time to intercede on behalf of others and allow the Holy Spirit to place in our minds and our hearts others who have need that God needs to meet a need for them. And we would pray for ourselves and then pray and intercede for others.
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus, forgive us of our sins, where we've fallen short, where we haven't measured up, where we haven't been who you've called us to be. Confession. It just literally means that we're agreeing with Jesus. He already knows. But we're asking the Holy Spirit to search us out. As David said in the song, search me, O God, and know my heart. Create in me a clean heart, right? We just take this time to ask God to show us the places that we need to be aware of, where we're not living in a place of glorifying Him, that we confess that to Him and ask for His forgiveness. First John 1, 9, if we confess, He is faithful and He forgives us. So we'll take some time to do that. And then as you do that, begin to pray for those who have wronged you or hurt you. We heard an excellent message this summer from Toby McMillan about praying for our enemies and wanting the best for them and praying that over their lives. And so let's take some time to remember that God's forgiven us and then let's pray that into and over the lives of others. And finally, Jesus concludes, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can we just close today with a time of asking God to lead us? Lead us into his will, lead us into his favor, lead us in his grace, that God would lead us into the places where we can share the God gospel conversations with others. So God, come and lead us. Amen and amen and amen. I, I hope, like we've talked about, that we begin to understand and grow into a thing of prayer being practice and not theory. May I even challenge you to take the Lord's Prayer. When asked, teach us to pray. This is what Jesus gave us. May we take this and each day pray the Lord's Prayer, being reminded of how Jesus taught us to pray. In His name. Amen.